Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'd like to pass along a few winter flying tips that'll help to keep your drone safe and let you get out and enjoy this beautiful winter weather. Now, I fly drones pretty much every day that it's not raining or it's not storming outside, and I really enjoy flying drones during the summer months where I've got green fields, I've got blue lakes, there's a lot of people out and about. It's just a great time to put a drone up. Plus, you're comfortable when you're flying your drone. The winter's entirely different. And believe me, there's nothing nicer than putting a drone up after a snowfall where you've got this beautiful blanket of white that's untouched across the field, and maybe there's a deer making his way across that field, and you put a drone up and capture some incredibly cool footage. So I love the winter months. It's also a lot quieter when you're flying in the winter because people tend to stay inside when it's cold, so I've got the whole field to myself. So winter is a great time to put your drones up, get some beautiful pictures, and capture some amazing footage. But the challenge is, flying in the summer and flying in the winter is dramatically different. And I've flown for a lot of years through the winter months. I've flown all over the country, up in the mountains, out in the plains. And you have to be careful when you're flying in the winter for a couple of different reasons. And I'll give you a few tips that'll keep the drone safe when you're flying during those winter months. So the first thing I'll tell you, if you're going to put a drone up and it's cold outside, especially if there's snow on the ground, be conservative. And what do I mean by that? Well, normally when you're flying your drone, you get used to how the drone reacts to your control. So you sort of develop a relationship with your drone where when you move the joysticks, it goes a certain direction at a certain speed and you're used to that. It's different in the winter time because number one, your thumbs are gonna be cold, so you're a little bit slower on the sticks, but also when you send the signal to the drone to turn left, because the drone is cold, it's gonna turn a little bit more slowly. So I wouldn't recommend the winter time to start trying all kinds of new stunts, like flying close to the ground or trying to dodge trees when you're flying through the forest. Be conservative. The other thing you wanna be aware of is that the drone may misbehave for a lot of different reasons because you're dealing with an electromechanical device here that has a ton of electronic circuitry inside that's keeping track of the GPS coordination, keeping the drone level in the sky, the crash avoidance is working, the camera's trying to focus, and all of that is affected by cold because electronics does not like the cold, especially the batteries. So if you're flying the drone in the winter time, the one thing I'll recommend is that you keep a keen eye on the battery level. Because my experience with the lithium batteries that are in these products, the LiPo batteries, is that LiPo chemistry does not like cold weather. So you have to be careful when you're flying it because again, if it's up at height, say 200 feet, and you're flying through cold air, those batteries are gonna get cold really quick. And when the batteries get cold, the charge goes down. So my experience in the field has been, if I'm flying a drone and maybe I've got a 35 minute flight time on it, I'll cut that in half. I'll figure the first 15 or 17 minutes, it's gonna fly normally. But once it starts cooling down, you may find that battery level drop from 50% to 30% to 15%, and all of a sudden you've got an alarm going off that you're a couple thousand feet away and the drone has 5% of the battery left. So you definitely wanna watch the battery level on the drone when you're flying. I also wouldn't recommend doing a lot of different types of stunts because even though you may have crash avoidance like in the Air 3 here, the lensing on the front, it's an optical lensing, and it's, it's looking for obstacles in the field. And when you're flying through cold air, you may pick up some moisture, which is gonna collect on those front lenses. And that can affect the way it can dodge different things out in the field. So pay attention to your controller, be conservative, try to keep it close, don't do the long runs with the drone, and especially keep an eye on the battery levels. All right, the second thing I'll recommend, and I talk about this all the time, when you're out there in the field and it's snow, you're basically standing on water. It's just frozen water. So the drone doesn't like water. So if you put the drone down in snow, the warm drone's gonna melt that snow and it's gonna get up inside the electronics. So I always recommend picking up a landing mat like this. This is a really nice one. It's got a ring in the outside that keeps it stiff. But a landing mat is important for a lot of different reasons. And I know if you're thinking, well, gee, Rick, I hand launch and hand catch. I don't need a mat. Well, this is a safe place. This is a place you can drop it down in the snow and now you've got a place to put your controller down if you need to. If you gotta take your gloves off, you've got a safe place to put those down. You can take off from a landing mat. You can land on a landing mat. So it gives you kind of this island of protection out there in the middle of the sea of snow that you don't wanna have anywhere near your drone. So a landing mat, I think, is a critical thing. I almost think of it as a landing mat Sort of like when you were a kid and you used to play tag. <laughs> you always had that one spot that was home. Nobody could mess with you when you were touching the home point. That's what this gives you. It gives you a home where you can land your drone, you can take off, and you can put your equipment down if you need to. So it's really good to have a landing mat with you. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the cold itself. Because winter weather, especially lower temperatures, can have a dramatic impact 
on what these drones do up in the sky. I already talked about how the reaction of the drone to the controls will be a little bit sluggish. The battery can be put in compromise as well. Now, one thing you want to do with the batteries, because they're LiPo technology, is you never want to get those batteries cold. And the rule of thumb I use with batteries is you want to think of your batteries as a small puppy. That's the analogy I'd like to use, because if you have a small puppy, you're never going to take the puppy out and lay him down in the field. You're never going to leave that puppy in your garage in the wintertime. You're also, in the summer, not going to put that puppy in your trunk of the car because it's going to get really hot in there. So the batteries are kind of like a little puppy that you don't want to get them too cold, you don't want to get them too warm, you want to keep them sort of in that middle zone. Well, how do you do that if you're out there in the field? I mean, the last thing you want to do is lay your batteries down on your mat because they're right on top of the snow and they're going to get cold real quick. So my recommendation is have a jacket that has interior pockets or maybe pick up one of those fishing vests that has a lot of pockets inside of it and then slide these batteries inside those pockets. You want to keep them close to your body because your body's warm and if you've got a jacket that's warm, putting the battery inside near your body is going to keep it at a moderate temperature. So when you pull it out of your jacket, slide it in the drone, put it up and start flying, you'll get a lot more extended flight time out of a warmer battery. So keep that vest with you, put the batteries inside. When it's really cold out there, I've used those pocket warmers. There's all kinds of electronic pocket warmers now that they look like battery banks, but they've also got heating coils inside of them. So you can put it on a low setting, slide that into one of your pockets slide your batteries into the other pockets, close your jacket, and then you've got kind of a, a nice little warm environment that you can pull those batteries out of, slide them in the drone and start flying. But again, be really careful to watch that battery level because that was the one thing that surprised me when I started flying in the winter because I trust the batteries to start at 100% slowly go down to 90, slowly go down to 80, down to 70, and there's kind of a linear track on how they discharge. In the wintertime, all bets are off. I'm telling you, it was like a 90% battery. The next thing I glanced at it eight seconds later, it's down to 75%. Then it's down to 50%, and I started panic panicking. So you want to make sure you keep an eye on the battery level, which is really, really important. Okay, another thing you want to keep track of is the sensors, because the sensors on the drone are really what tell the drone where the dangers are when you're flying. So you've got crash avoidance. Both of these drones have 360 degree crash avoidance, but that relies on these two sensors in the front. These two stereoscopic sensors are looking for hazards in front of the drone, and if it sees a hazard, it's gonna pull the drone back and save you. Same thing on the back, same thing on the sides. If these get occluded because they picked up a little bit of moisture when they're flying, which by the way, when you think about it, it's gonna be really hot on the bottom, it's gonna be really warm on the motors, everything else in this drone is gonna get cold really quickly. So you've got a difference in temperature between certain parts of the drone and other parts of the drone, which can really affect the flight performance. So if these get occluded, again, because they've got mist on them and they've got a little bit of sheen of, of ice or freezing on them, your crash avoidance is gonna work. But the one you really need to be careful of is the bottom sensor right here. These are VIO sensors which is visual inertial odometry. And the way those work, which is pretty clever, is when you get under a certain height, typically 30 feet, they're bouncing signals off the ground below them, and they're watching the ricochet of that signal come back to the drone. So when you get close to the ground, the drone knows exactly how close you are because the GPS is good, but it's not great with ground clearance. So the VIO sensors are critical and both of these have VIO sensors on them. So it's really important that those VIO sensors work well, especially if you're flying close to the ground. And let's be honest, if you're taking off, one of the most dramatic shots you can get is to fly across the ground a couple of feet off of it and then elevate and then look back down on that field. Well, the challenge with VIO sensors is that they need to see a difference in, this, in the situation below it. So it needs to see a difference in the ground features to know that the drone is moving and know how close it is to the ground. Well, when you think about it, snow is monolithic. It's a monochrome place underneath the drone. It's all white, so the drone really can't tell. So in the winter, don't fly too close to the ground. Keep it above 30 feet. If you come down under 30 feet, those VIO sensors are gonna get confused and instead of pulling back up and staying away from the ground, you might all of a sudden see your elevation change to where it's heading for the ground and crashed into a, in a snowbank someplace. So be really careful with the VIO sensors in the winter time. Another thing you wanna be aware of is you're gonna be using your fingers a lot, right? Obviously you're flying the drone with your thumbs, but you're gonna to wanna to poke away at the screen and make changes on the configuration. Maybe you'll change it from pictures to video. 
you want to have a, a pair of gloves that are flexible enough to use and you want to find gloves that have the touch tips on the fingers because a lot of the gloves nowadays have that connectivity tab on the end of it where if you touch the screen it's like your fingers touching the screen they're inexpensive and what i tend to do is wear those and then wear a big set of gloves gloves over top of them so when i'm setting up and i'm getting on site i've got really warm hands when i start flying i'll take off those bigger outer gloves and I'll use those thinner gloves when I'm flying. Keeps my hands warm and gives me the ability to still touch the screen and make any changes I need to make. The last thing I'll tell you is that you're, you're really a slave to the weather when you're flying in the wintertime. Unlike the summertime where you've got kind of, you know, consistent temperatures and consistent wind patterns, typically under 200 feet, it's about the same. In the wintertime, you're a slave to that weather. And when you get up to height, you have all kinds of hazards around you know, density of the air changes because cold, cold air is a lot more dense than hot air, which means the drones are going to climb a little bit better. But they've got to fight a little bit harder to get through that dense air. But the other challenge you've got, there could be moisture up there that's either in liquid form or it's locked into some time in a frozen liquid, which are snowflakes. And that could be up 300 feet. You're on the ground, nothing's going on, but there's all kinds of, of mist up there that's going to cause you issues, which is going to cold, you know, going to cool down your drone pretty consistently. Plus, as you're flying through it, the warm parts of the drone are going to melt that moisture in the air and that could get inside the drone. So anytime you're flying in the winter, I'd recommend again, if you've got a 35 minute flight time, cut it down to 15 minutes, 17 minutes, start pulling back closer to your takeoff point. So heaven forbid anything starts happening, it's a little bit funky, you can bring it in and land it safely because the last thing you want to have is an air condition pop up on the drone when you're 3,000 feet away or your battery goes down to 15% when you're that far away and now you're panicking trying to get the drone back and land it safely. So those are just some of the things that I'd like to keep in mind. I recommend you get out there and fly in the winter. I mean, you can't keep me indoors after a snowfall. I just love going out, nice and quiet. I've got this blanket of snow. There's no footprints through it. Nobody's been out there to mess it up. No snowball fights going on. Maybe there's a deer out there in the field. And boy, I'll tell you, I get out of the truck, put the drone up, and I fly at a height where I'm not gonna scare the deer, but that beautiful footage of coming down over a field, it's just magical. It's just a beautiful time to be out there. So hopefully you found this helpful. Again, fly your drones. I hope you guys are having a great winter getting these drones up in the air because these magical robots can change your life. And I know that sounds dramatic, but I say it every time. I am never more happy than when I'm driving out to location with my drone, with a, with a bag full of charged batteries, and just an afternoon to spend up in the air with a drone, photographing different areas and taking video footage. I just love it. And I know you love it as well. So thanks an awful lot for tuning in. I hope you guys are getting a lot of airtime this winter. And until next time, as always, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.